going to talk about the fourth feature in the Django framework, which is mostly goes unnoticed by a lot of developers. Uh, that is nothing but Django form sets. Um, as a developer, I think uh, if you've been working with forms, you have more often than not come across Django form sets. And uh, this is a uh, not very easily configurable or not the most prettiest option which is available in the Django framework, but it is definitely useful. Uh, I think most of us avoid using Django framework, Django form sets because of two reasons. One reason is that we don't know what to use it for, like we don't know why we need to use Django form sets, and the other reason is that we don't know how to use Django form set. So that about sums up my choice of topic which is the hows and whys of using Django form sets. So a little introduction about me. Um, I started developing uh, Python two years ago when I was a Google Summer of Code student. And uh, I moved on to Django development pretty recently in 2013 when I coded for Mailman. And apart from that, I like uh, reading books, taking photographs, as you can see. And uh, I've also just started to learn to swim. So this is my uh, this is uh, the first talk of such a great magnitude. So uh, starting off, I guess uh, before I started preparing for this talk, I was looking up a few articles about Django Formsets online, and uh, this is what I found: Django Formsets, the worst thing ever. Django Formsets got you on how to lose your sanity. <laughs> So after looking at this, I realized that uh, anybody would run away from using form sets if you have such kind of help on the internet. So uh, moving on to the crux of the presentation, that is, uh, why would you want to use a Django form set? So this is a basic form in Django, um, and uh, there are many occasions where you will probably want to replicate this form uh, on the same page. So you want multiple types, I mean, multiple forms of the same type, or if you want to create a data grid to use it. So breaking it down, when you want this form to look like this, is when you use the Django form set. So you use the same form multiple number of times. And uh, yeah, so you can predefine the number of forms, or you can have a dynamically changing number of forms. And what matters is that you can validate and save each form set, each form within the form set, uh, in a very uh, easy manner if you use this. Uh, let me give you an example of uh, where I used form set. So, how many of you have used Mailman? Can I just see a raise of hands? If you probably receive a monthly password reminder email and text, you're, you've used a mailing list, which is run by Mailman. Uh, so, the current Mailman version, it looks like this. The user interface is pretty long. Uh, this, this is a typical page where uh, a user can change their settings for the mailing list. So, what one would do is log into the mailing list and access these settings, change them, and save it. But, what will you do if you have Two mailing lists. Say you have something called Serious Developers and you have something just for fun. So you subscribe to two different mailing lists and uh, all of a sudden you decide to go on vacation, like me. And uh, you probably want to stop receiving mails from some mailing lists. So I would want to continue receiving mails from Serious Developers and maybe I would just uh, disable delivery of emails from the other email. So what I will need to do is log in twice. So once into the first mailing list, change the settings and log out. And then log in again into the second mailing list and do the same. So this problem is alleviated when we have, say, 10 different mailing lists, which is the case in open source. We are subscribed to several different mailing lists. And uh, I was supposed to find a solution for this. And what I was supposed to do is get everything to work in one page. No logging in, just one login, and irrespective of the number of uh, mailing lists a person is subscribed to, you, they should be able to change their settings. 
And uh, the solution for that was found in the Django documentation in the form of faucets. So we are currently working on a new web interface for Mailman. It's called uh, Pistorius, and it is written in Django. And this is how the settings page looks now. So this is a uh, email-based setting. So if you have two different emails, you can change your uh, preferences for those particular emails. And this is a subscription-based preferences where if you have two different mailing lists like Hello and World. Um, so yeah, there is a slight difference in both. This is a more of a vertical form set and this is a horizontal form set. So that is the difference in these things. Um, I guess now we have uh, kind of figured out why we need a form set and where we would use it. So moving on to the next thing, the how do we use a uh, form set. I think I went a little too fast, so I only have a few minutes left. Um, okay, so the how of using a form set. Uh, most of my talk is designed for uh, beginners or intermediate level people. So the code which I've written is a little uh, low level, I guess if you look at it that way. Um, so yeah, so the how of using a form set would basically involve several steps. First step is creating a form set, and the next step is defining or using the form set in your views or templates. And uh, after that, you'll be validating your form set once you have entered data into it. And uh, so, yeah, so if you're trying to create a form set, it's quite simple. You just need to import the form sets library in uh, Python, and you can use the form set factory method to. Yeah, so over here, to simplify it for you, the user form is any form which you create. And every time you need a form to be replicated, say, 10 times, you need to pass that user form as a parameter to the form set factory method. So what really happens here is that doing this will only generate one form. Because nowhere have you specified the number of forms that you need in the form set. So by default, it will just show you the single form, which would have been the case in any other way. And in case you want to specify more number of forms, uh, like predefine a set number of forms, you will have to pass the parameter extra <coughs> in the form set factory method. So by passing extra is equal to 5, I am generating 5 different forms of the same type which you saw here. Uh, I think I've done something similar for mailman over here. So I'm passing extra is equal to 2. So what I'm doing here is I'm counting the number of aliases or alternate email addresses the person has. And once I count that, I'm passing that as the extra parameter, which is generating the number of forms. So all this happens in the uh, views, in mailman at least. So the next step is using the form set. It's quite simple. You just need to use that tag within uh, the standard form HTML tags. So this will basically uh, generate it in the standard form which Python provides as a table. And uh, if you want to customize your form set in your templates, so what um, what you can do is say in my, my situation, if I want to just display one setting to the user and not display the entire form. So I can iterate over the forms within the form tag and for each form in the form set, I display the attribute. So that's quite simple really and uh, it's, it's not quite difficult to understand when you're passing, when you're just displaying one, one variable. Mm. Yeah, so there is an extra line which I've included here that is form set dot management form. So uh, when you're using a form set, this is a very important uh, tag to place if you want to validate your form after you're submitting it. Uh, so no form validations work if you're not including form set dot management form. And uh, it's also useful because this will let you keep track of the maximum number of forms, and the total forms, and other parameters. So yeah, and uh, there is another feature which I forgot to tell you guys about. When you are uh, when you are uh, creating a form set, you can 
in school setting should parameters in your form and you can pass them within the uh, use of form set method in the last line. You can just set initial is equal to and then your uh, key value pairs. So it's quite simple. Okay. So this is a slightly more complex uh, version of uh, form sets. So I guess this is something which you would find in views. <coughs> so I've met a couple of people uh, over the past few days and most of them have said that they find you, uh, they find using form sets with class based views very difficult. So this is a class, an example of a class based view or a method inside it. And what's, what's ideally happening here is that you are creating a form set called user form set and you are basically checking if it is the get or a post. If, if you are posting the parameters, you are retrieving the form set and making a check for the form set to be valid or not. And the is valid function is a built-in, is a provided method by Django. So if form set is valid, I'll probably iterate over the form set and uh, get my required parameters or save the form set and so on. Else if it is not, it will basically result in a get method, in which case I will just render the response to the HTML page. Um, oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> So I just like to thank a few people. Uh, one of them is Florian Fuchs. He was my research mentor and uh, he was helping me out till yesterday with my talk, even though he's in Germany right now. And uh, the other person is Lynn Root. I think a lot of you here are aware of her, and she was my research mentor too. And she's the one who suggested that I should come to Django for Europe and also apply to the talk here. Apart from that, I would like to thank the DinoCon organizers, especially Daniel for uh, consistently uh, interacting with me and making it and making it easy for me to come here. And of course, the Django Software Foundation for uh, sponsoring my trip and uh, letting me come here. And of course, you for uh, attending my small talk and giving me moral support. So thank you.